Hello again, and I have to say it's confession time. I have been playing fast and loose with this code, and I have to admit this is messy. It's hard to follow. This is not the way you should be writing Vertex code, and I apologize. I've been trying to keep these videos short, but now let's take an opportunity to refactor, clean up our code, and learn a little bit about what Vertex calls asynchronous coordination. So we've got a bunch of different things going on. We're deploying verticals, migrating databases, setting up routers, HTTP servers, loading configuration. Let's clean that all up into a much more cohesive whole. In Vertex, there are two different styles of coordination of futures or promises. One is sequential coordination or sorry, composition, they call it. And what this is, is do A, then B, then C, and so on and so forth. And only if A succeeds successfully do you do B, then C, and at the end you handle errors. Uh, if any step along the way fails, you skip all the way to the error handler. The other method of composition is called concurrent composition. And that is more along the lines of do A, B, C, and D. And once they all or any complete, do something else. And most importantly, let's start out with some sequential composition. What we really want to do is order our operations in here in a clean, concise, readable manner. And the first thing we really need is to load our configuration. So let's let's say we want to do do config. And then the next thing we want to do is uh, do our database migrations. <clears throat> so do database migrations. And the next thing we want to do is configure our router. And the next thing we want to do is start our HTTP server. And the last thing we want to do is deploy our other verticals. And if all of that succeeds, we want to resolve our startup promise either successfully or unsuccessfully. So if this succeeds, we'll go on to this, to this, to this, to this. And if they all succeed, we'll resolve this promise successfully. If any step along the way fails, it will immediately jump down to here and resolve this promise unsuccessfully or it be failed. <clears throat> so we already have this do config method. Let's take a look at it real quick. Um, what it looks like now is that it takes this start promise, this router, we want to set it so that it doesn't take any parameters, but that it returns a future of type void, which means that we're no longer going to need to run this asynchronous handler because instead we're going to return the result of this asynchronous method via a future. So we'll say return future dot future promise and we'll pass in that promise as the result handler instead. Uh, we need a type parameter here. Oh, except, wait, we don't want to return a future void. We want to return a future of JSON object. That's the right answer. And we need to import future. Oh, wrong type of future. We want a vertex future. 
And in this case, actually, I don't think we need the type parameter here because we know that get config returns a, a JSON object. So step one, done. We can go up here, we can uncomment this. It's good to go. So now we want to do our database migrations. Um, one thing that you might notice if you try to go through this organization is you'll notice we, we load the config and we can pass one parameter to the next composed method. And so in this case, we could pass our config to the do database migrations, but then we would have to, from this, pass that same JSON object to the configure router. But at that point, we want to pass the router to the server, and we also want to pass the config to the server, but we can't pass two parameters. So we're going to put an intermediate step in here, and we're going to call this compose store config. And so let's create that store config method. And it's going to return a future of type void store config. It's going to accept a JSON object that is our configuration that we've loaded. And we're just going to say that we want to store that in a final field. So final JSON object loaded config equals new JSON object. Down here in store config, we just say loaded config, uh, merge in the config. And we can return a promise of type void succeeded promise future. All right, step two, done. Now we want to do our database migrations. Well, we already have a do database migrations method. We just need to change the signature a little bit and some of the code a little bit. Uh, so we want this to return a future of type void. And we want it to accept an unused void parameter. And instead of passing in a promise and resolving that promise, we just say promise dot succeeded promise future. And if it fails, we say promise dot failed promise and we wrap our exception and we need to add a type parameter to our promises. Oh, and we need a return statement. Why do I keep forgetting that? I am uh, apparently thinking of other programming languages where the last statement automatically is the return value. So now we have this. The next thing is, is I noticed that we have some hard-coded configurations. Why don't we get those from our configuration instead? So now we can say JSON object db config equals loaded config dot get JSON object db and we can say string url equals dbconfig.getString uh, url. And then in case that value is null, let's put a default value. And same thing with uh, admin user. We're going to get dbconfig get string admin user and the default admin user is postgres admin pass dbconfig.getString admin pass and the default admin password so now we can just put these variables right into our method call And now we have no longer got any hard-coded values. So next step.
done. So after we've done our database migrations, we want to configure our router. Uh, you see here, here's all the code to configure our router. Let's just copy that out. And we'll create a new method called configure router. And it's going to, again, accept a void unused parameter. Now, why do we keep passing this unused void parameter? Well, the method signatures for each stage of this sequential composition need to match. And so you have to accept a parameter. You have to return a future. Otherwise, these method signatures don't match up. Uh, void is how we tell the Java language that we don't care about the result of that value. It's, it's a null value of a type called void. So in configure router, we can just paste in that existing code we had, and we can say promise dot succeeded promise with our router and return it as a future. That's done. Oh, except we forgot our return statement again. So step four, done. And then we want to start our HTTP server. Well, before we were doing that through several layers of asynchronous callbacks and result handlers and things like that. Let's clean that up a bit. Let's just copy this code out, delete this whole method that we're no longer using, and create a new method called start HTTP server, which accepts our router object and uses our loaded configuration. But we don't want to continue on from this step until the HTTP server starts. This listen is actually an asynchronous operation. How do we coordinate that? Well, we can use a capability built right in to Vertex. So what I'm gonna do is uh, store this in a variable. And the reason I'm doing this is to make this a little more readable, not have big run on lines. And we're gonna say future.future .future going to return that future. Uh, oh, we need to import HTTP server. That's why we were getting all the squiggly lines. So what we're doing is we're, we're setting up all the parameters for our HTTP server. And when we go to actually start the server listening, we're passing in that port, but we're also passing in this promise that will get resolved as the async handler. So when the server is successfully up and listening, it will resolve this promise. And we're returning that resolved promise wrapped in a future. So next step, done. Now we want to deploy those other verticals like Hello Groovy, Hello JS. This is where we get a chance to play around with some concurrent composition because we really don't care what order we load Hello Groovy or Hello JS. We just want to make sure that they are loaded because that's how we handle our requests. So we can say future of type void deploy other verticals and it's going to accept that HTTP server. We don't really need this parameter, but again, we have to make those type signatures match. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say future of type string, uh, hello groovy equals future dot future 
and we're going to put that lambda in there promise vertex dot deploy vertical hello dot groovy and that completion handler is going to be our promise again we're going to copy and paste that and do that again for our javascript And so we now have these two futures. And we want to make sure that both of them are done before we move on to the next step. And the way we do that in Vertex is using a composite future. And we can tell it that we want all of them to resolve, any of them to resolve, or we want to join the results of all of them so that we get all of those results returned in the next stage. Now we don't care about the returns uh, in this case, so we just want to say all of them need to resolve, and we'll put our hello groovy and our hello js, and then we're going to map empty. Because we don't care about the results, and because our next stage needs a future of type void, we can just map to empty. All right, so it's going to deploy these two in parallel, and once they're both resolved, then we can move on to the next and final step. And honestly, this is already done too, because we're returning a future of type void here. It already matches the signature of set handler, because our start promise is also of type void. So if all of these steps succeed, the promise is used as a handler and resolved successfully saying that this entire vertical has loaded. Now we can get rid of all this other junk that we don't need anymore. And we've made a relatively clean implementation that should be easily traceable. So we start here. That makes it pretty obvious this is the start of the vertical. Uh, we see that we do config, store the config, database migrate, configure router, configure HTTP server, deploy our other verticals, and we handle the result of that. This reads very much like a sentence. It's really nice, concise code. And that has eliminated a good chunk of our technical debt. We have something that's easily readable and maintainable. In our next section, I'll show you how to break this out a little bit more so that we're following some better object-oriented principles. I hope it's helpful and talk to you soon.